Hello everyone and welcome back to the Futech HD channel. The first step in pipe manufacturing is the selection of materials. Steel is chosen as the primary material due to its strength, durability, and recyclability. Steel pipes are ideal for carrying large volumes of water without any loss. At the manufacturing facility in Saginaw, Texas, Northwest Pipe focuses on constant innovation in pipe design. Each piece of steel pipe is manufactured to be part of an engineered system, tailored to the project's performance requirements and site conditions. This ensures that the pipes are customized to meet the specific needs of each project. The manufacturing process also includes the production of specialized components such as elbows and outlets that go into the pipeline system. Northwest Pipe doesn't just sell plain straight pipes, they provide an engineered product that meets the specifications set by the owner and engineers. This attention to detail is crucial in ensuring the quality and functionality of the pipes. One notable project undertaken by Northwest Pipe is the manufacturing of over 22,000 tons of engineered steel welded pipe near Leonard, North Texas. This pipe system will transport water from a treatment center to 80 communities in the region. The collaboration between Northwest Pipe and the project team ensures effective and safe installation of the pipeline system. The manufacturing process of Perfect Pipe by Geneva Pipe and Precast combines the strength of reinforced concrete pipe with a corrosion-resistant liner and a leak-free joint, revolutionizing wastewater systems. The process takes place at their precast facility in Orem, Utah, USA. Perfect Liner. The process begins with the Perfect Liner, which is a high-density polyethylene, HDPE, liner designed to protect the concrete from corrosion commonly found in municipal sanitary sewers. One side of the liner has thousands of anchors that will be embedded into the concrete for a secure connection with the pipe. Liner preparation. The liner is cut to fit the diameter of the pipe. Certified welders then weld the liner seam to form a cylinder, which is spark tested to ensure a 100% leak-free weld and complete protection from corrosion. Liner expansion. The liner cylinder goes to the liner expansion station. The ends of the liner are heated and expanded. A steel ring is inserted to maintain the shape during concrete pouring. Eventually, the steel ring will be replaced with the pipe coupler. Fitting into perfect pipe form, the expanded protective liner is fitted into the perfect pipe form. A steel cage is dropped over the liner to reinforce the concrete. Plastic spacers are used to ensure even spacing between the liner steel cage and concrete form. Self-consolidating concrete, SCC, mixing. Perfect Pipe utilizes self-consolidating concrete, SCC, which is a highly flowable mix made from a precise blend of aggregates, cement, water, and super plasticizers. Pouring and curing. The fresh SCC mix is released into the Perfect Pipe form, and the top is carefully floated for a level finish. The concrete is left to cure, and the form may be covered during this time to ensure ideal curing conditions. Stripping the form. Once the concrete has cured, the perfect pipe form is stripped, revealing a fully integrated product. The anchored liner is securely connected to the concrete, and the steel ring is replaced with the internal coupler. Compatibility and integration. Perfect Pipe is designed to connect to most existing sanitary sewer systems and can be paired with their lined concrete manhole to create a 100% lined corrosion-free system. Before excavating the pipe trench, an embankment may need to be constructed if necessary. The embankment should be 4 feet above the top of the pipe or to the subgrade elevation, whichever is lower. However, for pipes with a diameter greater than 72 inches, an embankment is not required. The trench width should match the outside diameter of the pipe barrel plus 4 feet. For deeper pipe trenches, the slope should be laid back appropriately. The bottom of the trench should be compacted and proof rolled using approved equipment such as self-propelled trench rollers, 
vibratory rollers, or plate compactors. If the trench bottom does not provide adequate bearing for the pipe, it should be remediated by excavating, drying, and compacting or replacing the material. An appropriate bedding should be created for the pipe installation. The bedding depth varies depending on the type of pipe. For concrete pipe, a 6-inch deep bedding consisting of aggregate material is used, while metal and thermoplastic pipes require bedding with PennDOT number 2A aggregate material. During the installation, the pipes should be joined according to the specified joint requirements. Joint gaps should be monitored, and if they cannot be maintained within the specified tolerance, work should be stopped to investigate the cause. Proper measures should be taken to ensure tight joints and prevent infiltration of materials. After the pipe is installed, the backfilling process begins. The sides of the pipe should be backfilled with compacted material to provide lateral support. The engineering firm of Arsenault Wilson & Cole successfully completed a groundbreaking pipeline project. This project involved the installation of a 3,500-foot section of 48-inch diameter pipe to connect a municipal water plant in Port Arthur, Texas, to the Chenier LNG facility in Cameron Parish, Louisiana. The pipeline had to be installed underground, passing underneath a hurricane flood protection levee, a railroad switchyard, and the Sabine Natchez Canal. The project faced several challenges, including the need to ensure the safety of the structures above the pipeline, such as the flood protection levee. Traditional horizontal directional drilling, HDD, was not deemed safe due to the high pressures involved in the soil formation in Port Arthur, which consisted of firm clay and silty clay. Therefore, a unique drilling method called direct pipe was employed. The direct pipe method, designed and operated by the German company Herenicht, offered several advantages over traditional HDD. It involved the use of a directional microtunneling machine and a hydraulic pipe thruster. The pre-welded pipeline was laid out behind the launch pit on rollers and installed simultaneously as the borehole was excavated. The cutter head at the tunnel face broke up the soil, which was mixed with a bentonite lubricant and returned through slurry lines inside the pipe. The excavated material was separated and removed at a separation plant, while the bentonite lubricant was reused. The direct pipe system provided permanent support for the borehole, eliminating the need for expensive shaft construction. It allowed for the inspection of the pipeline before insertion, ensuring greater safety. The method also enabled high installation speeds, with an average rate of 6 feet per hour and rates of up to 20 feet per hour achieved for this project. The small footprint required for the direct pipe system was crucial due to the limited operating space available for construction. The project area was confined between a residential neighborhood and a heavily trafficked highway. Despite the constraints, there was enough room for the launch pit, the operator and control center, the slurry separation plant, and maneuvering of construction vehicles. The installation of the prefabricated pipeline or pullback string presented additional challenges, requiring the closure of highway access and the welding of additional pipe sections. 
the ability to start and stop the drilling process as needed was crucial for this step. The project team also addressed inconveniences caused to neighboring residents by constructing new driveways, carports, and a sound dampening wall. After 29 days of continuous operations, breakthrough was achieved in a public park on the other side of the canal. A small reception pit was dug, and the microtunneling machine was disconnected from the pipeline. The internal lines and support were removed, and the carrier pipe, a 30-inch high-density polyethylene HDPE, pipe, was installed. Within 21 days, the construction site was restored to its original state. The entire project, from approval to final site cleanup, was completed in less than five months, well within the stipulated time frame. Arsena Wilson and Cole's successful execution of this project was attributed to their expert knowledge, detailed analysis, planning, utilization of advanced technology, and the collaboration of a capable team. Before installing a pipe with the HK3 PETA watts connector into a precast concept space, several steps need to be followed. First, the distance required for cutting the piping should be measured, accounting for the lengths that will be inside the concrete base. Once the pipe is cut to the appropriate length, the ends that will be placed inside the manhole should be chamfered and deburred. To ensure a proper connection, the entire circumference of the connector must be equally addressed. The pipe should be lubricated thoroughly at the end in the interior of the connector. If the pipe needs to be connected to another pipe, the two sections should be aligned, and the spigot end of the pipe should be slowly inserted into the bell end of the downstream pipe section. When placing a precast concrete base into a trench, appropriate lifting clutches should be used, and the base should be lowered without any material present on the bottom to ensure level placement. The end of the downstream pipe and the outlet of the base connecting with the downstream pipe should be lubricated. The manhole base should be lowered until it aligns with the downstream pipeline, and the pipe should be pushed into the outlet. Once alignment is confirmed, the manhole base should be pushed firmly until the pipe is securely placed. For placing an upstream pipe, the same process of measuring, cutting, chamfering, and aligning should be followed. The selected inflow opening of the manhole base should be cleared of debris, and both the inflow opening and the upstream pipe should be lubricated. The pipe should be aligned with the inflow opening and pushed firmly until it butts against the rear of the third step. <laughs> 